Hello again. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to convert or refurbish a top run of traditional mortar bedded ridge tiles like these into a modern dry ridge system like this that is both windproof and maintenance free. And what's more you can use roughly the same technique on slate roofs, small plain tiles or concrete interlocking tiles. Here we are on the roof and ready to remove the old mortar. Now I'm not going to show you how to do that because I've already covered it in another video but I will make that video available at the end and in the description bar below and I recommend watching it if you haven't done so already. But before removal I've taken time to mark the original position of the joints in the ridges onto the roof with a simple scratch line. This is so that when the ridge tiles are removed like this I have some sort of general idea where the ridge tiles were originally positioned. This is so when I come to put them back on later I will at least have something to aim for and this should stop me being short of ridge tiles if I compact the joints too much for instance. Back at ground level here's the kit we're going to use and in my opinion it's one of the better universal dry ridge systems on the market. It contains all the brackets and fixings necessary for laying a 6 metre length of ridge tiles. It doesn't however contain any hip support trays or tile clips that may be required for replacing hip ridges and that's available in an additional add-on kit and we'll take a look at that in the next video which will be about fitting or converting a dry hip ridge. If you're interested in either of these two kits or knowing the difference between dry ridge and dry hip ridge then visit the website link by clicking the link at the end of the video or in the description bar below. The first thing we want to be doing now is fitting the ridge batten brackets. The ones provided in the kit can be used on either a traditionally constructed roof with rafters and a ridge board or on the more modern trust roof construction. And let's just take a look at the traditionally constructed roof first because this really does open up the most fixing opportunities. This is basically the timber skeleton responsible for supporting your roof. And with this build method you have a ridge board at the top of the roof here. But what it does really is spoils you for choice for fixing opportunities. Firstly they can be fitted directly onto the rafters like this or anywhere you like directly to the ridge board like so with the straps of the batten brackets fixed to the ridge board later from inside the roof. As another alternative the fixings can be screwed directly to the ridge board itself or additional battens can be secured to the ridge board to provide extra height if required. Although if you're converting to dry ridge to improve ventilation as I'm about to keep in mind that adding battens like this can impede airflow underneath the roof tiles and of course none of this timber will be visible when covered with felt or breather membrane. On a modern truss roof like this one that we're about to work on fixing opportunities are a little bit more limited. My preferred method is similar to the install on a new roof. We simply fit the brackets to the top of the trusses themselves like this. Some people do screw buttons directly to the trusses but again this can restrict airflow. And again of course the trusses will not be directly visible when obscured by the undersarking above. Ok so it's back onto the roof and this time with my ridge batten brackets and I'm going to fit the first one as close to the end of the roof as possible. Here I've removed the top two roof tiles just above the roof truss we will be fixing to and as you can see I've marked the felt with my fingers to show the edges of the truss. If you gently press the felt or membrane trusses or rafters are easily found like this. And it's this truss I will be fixing to with my first bracket in a moment. Now sometimes it is possible to fit straps of the brackets to the tile battens directly on the face and through the trusses or rafters beneath. Often though you will find it will foul the tiles when they go back at a later stage. On balance I prefer to fit the brackets directly to the rafters or trusses like this. All I'm doing here is levering up the roof batten or lath with a flat pry bar. A light levering pressure against any timber beneath normally pops the lath up as much as we need. All that's really required is enough room to slip a metal cutting blade. I prefer using a multi cutter because it's nice and fast although you could use a hacksaw blade if you really wanted to. As you can see now if I lever against the lath again it's totally free from fixings. 
Now all we need to do is make a couple of subtle bends in the end of the brackets. It doesn't have to be too elaborate and this is just so that we can get it under the top two buttons without stabbing unwanted holes in the felt beneath. Once you have it under the tile buttons, you can bend the brackets a little more, ready for sliding onto the truss beneath. Again, use the flat pry bar if you need to. Once you get the legs onto the edges of the timber underneath, it's very easy to slide it into position. Now, using the tension between the lath and the truss, you can adjust the bracket for height, either up or down, very easily. If you use a good quality galvanised nail, you shouldn't have any problems with penetration or bending. Finished installation height is usually so that when the ridge fixing button is placed into the accompanying bracket, it finishes flush or just above the highest point of the roof tile. It can of course be higher like this one, but not so high that it fouls the ridges themselves or the ridge joint clamps, and we'll see that in a bit. If you're still not sure at this stage, you can temporarily pop the tiles back, place some roofing batten onto the top bracket and make sure that you have the correct height like this before fixing. Once you're happy with the final height, the brackets can be fixed through the lath, bracket and into the timber below. Now the tiles can be put back and you just move on to the next bracket and so on and so on. If however you're lucky enough to have a ridge board, it's normally just a matter of pinpointing a location along the length of the ridge board with your fingers that doesn't foul the rafters beneath. With that done, the undersarking can be then cut or the bracket legs simply push through like this. If you want to, you can drill or screw the brackets into position. Again, you can work out the final fixing height by offering in and off cuts of timber as a reference point. And if you think you need extra height, Larger battens can be used or you can double up if you think that's required. Back on our job I've fitted all the brackets to a height I'm happy with. This is normally on or between every truss or rafter and just about any kit I've ever used gives you enough brackets with usually one over as a spare. Ok so that completes part 1 and the most tricky part of the job. I'll see you in part 2 for fitting the ridge pattern, ventilated roll and ridges. And the links are available here in the description bar or on the website. Thanks for watching.